Hey guys, this is Eileen. Let's do another educational series and today's topic is how the heck do you read a nutrition label? You ever go to the store, pull something off the shelf, you turn to this portion of the product and kind of go, I don't know what I'm looking at. <laughs> this is all mumbo jumbo. So the idea is what we're trying to do is demystify how to look at that um, nutritional label to make it easy to read, easy to understand, and easy to make really good food choices based upon what you're looking at on that label. Okay, so two things. You may need to review and uh, go over this kind of video maybe two or three times. It's a kind of a video where I think there's a lot of golden nuggets in here and you may catch one or two the first time you view it and then you, there's others that you'll catch on the second or the third viewing. The second thing I was going to say, when you go to view this, you may need to use that, you know, your fingers to make this screen a little bigger. I try to, you know, make this uh, viewer friendly, but at times to see words or numbers a little clearer, you may need to do that to your screen if you're viewing it on your cell phone. With that said, I want to turn this around and I've created an example here of looking at the Kraft Macaroni and Cheese food label. And I've blown it up, I've made things in, you know, color coded. And what I just want you to do is just take a look at the top here. And again, I'm using the Kraft Macaroni and Cheese example because I just thought this was interesting because I think not only myself, but a lot of people consume and live off of this when you're in college. So this is the kind of thing, let's take a look at what we did to ourselves uh, by uh, eating so much Kraft macaroni and cheese way back when and to make better food choices now. You start at the top and the top is the serving size. And for this package of Kraft macaroni and cheese, the serving size is one cup. But the whole uh, container is actually two serving sizes or in other words, two cups. And that's where you have to get real with your serving size because that will impact how many calories you end up consuming. So you have to get real and be honest with yourself. Are you really going to eat just the one serving or are you going to eat the whole darn box? And if you go to the next section, you'll see why. The calories lift, listed for one serving is 250. And the calories from fat is right next to that, which is 110. However, if you ate the whole box, you eat two servings, that turns into 500 calories. This turns into 220 calories from fat. So get real and actually try to limit your portions. It's way better, but at least you can see the damage that gets done if you don't stick to just having one serving. Now the next section, I'm actually going to lift this up so that you can see it a little bit better. And this section in the yellow is, I call this limit these nutrients because these are the carbs. This is the total fats. So if you can see total fat, saturated fat, trans fat, cholesterol, sodium, total carbs. You wanna, I want to point out they are measured in grams. Okay. So these are the things we want to limit, especially if you're either have heart disease or if you're trying to prevent heart disease. Um, also this stuff contributes to diabetes and being overweight. And I would just say almost all the health problems you're hearing about today, those type of people, unfortunately have a diet high in these items listed here. So we want to actually limit these to help our health be a lot better. If you go down to the next section, that next section would start now, the real labels obviously are not color coded. So that's where you want to see the next section would be uh, the dietary fiber would be the, the heading of that. So again, these are separated out to help you view this a lot easier. So this section is what you want more of. These are the vitamins. This is the fiber. Now, unlike this section, most of these items do, are not measured in grams or milligrams. They are measured in these percentages that are in the far right column. 
And I'll get to that explanation in a minute, but just know that that's what's happening as far as the measurements. This is what you want more of. Obviously, <clears throat> you want to get nutritional value from your food. So the food choices that you make, try not to make them empty calories. You want them to be nutritious. Now, you go down to the next item here. This is what's called the footnote. Now, both the footnote and the area shaded in purple, these are guidelines that have been created by the FDA so that you can make better food choices based on the information of what is in each um, item of these nutritional um, foods or these ingredients on here. And the footnote, depending on the size of the product, depending on um, that, that's going to determine how large the label is. If the label needs to be small because it's a small product, you will only see this portion here. This is just saying that it's about percentage of daily values, you know, for <clears throat> a diet based on 2,000 calories, um, and so on and on and on. But however, it's down below here gives, it's a guideline. This is a guideline and this is a guideline. And so for example, if we want to, if you had heart disease and you wanted to make sure you were limiting your sodium intake. So what the FDA is recommending, and this is how this is an excellent guideline to use. These values are based upon what you should consume in a whole day's time. So for the sodium, they're saying you should consume less than 2,400 milligrams within a whole day. So if you went back to the section that listed the sodium, it's listing it as 470 milligrams. So that would be for one serving. So then you would just calculate and total up how many other items you're eating and how much sodium is in all of those foods. However, if we're sticking to this example of maybe that you ate this whole box, therefore that 470 milligrams turns into 940 milligrams. So based upon that they want you to limit this to less than 2,400 milligrams, it's not half, but it's almost half when you consume one whole box. You understand how this is where, how you can use this guideline and go back to look at what are the measurements and amounts of each item within this product. That helps you to make your choice. Is this a good choice for me or not? based on your health, based on your goals of what you're trying to aim at as far as um, losing weight or just living a healthier lifestyle. Now, if we use, and you could do that for each item and you compare it to the guideline. If this is another guideline, this is another way of doing it. And what these are based upon, because if you notice some of, most of the nutritional portion of this label did not have grams or milligrams what it's referred to as using percentages. All of this information is based on research the FDA has gathered, and these percentages are really based on 100%. So if we wanna, um, if we wanna use fat, for example, um, the total fat, according to the percentage of daily value, that's what this right-hand column represents, the FDA has given us a guideline to use when you're looking at these numbers. The guideline is that if a number in here is 20% or more, that is considered a high item. Whereas if the numbers within this column are 5% or lower, then that is a very low ingredient for that product. So if we go back to the fat, it says here in this column that the fat is 18%. So that you have to remember it is one serving. So if you use this guide, 18% compared to say the 20%, then that would mean it's just falling right under it, possibly being considered a high fat type of a product. If however, you ate the whole box, that 18% turns into 36%. So when you compare it to this guideline of 20% or more, it's a very high fatty product.
Notice how the serving sizes are making the difference. Now the good guys, you can see here, vitamin A is 4%, vitamin C is 2%, iron is 4%. Now that's one serving. That, if you use this guideline of 5% or less, is considered a low item. These are low amounts. Even with, if you did the, ate the whole box and you doubled these numbers, the, for example, the vitamin A would be there for 8%. Still falls under a fairly low amount for uh, it being uh, a product to give you vitamin A. So this per particular product, when you use these guidelines and go back into the label, what you can see, it's a very high caloric type of an item. It's a very fatty item with a lot of sodium and contains very little nutritional um, type of uh, food for you. So that, how do you make your choice here? Do you say, you know what, this is my cheat meal. You can do that, but what are you going to do the rest of the day? Because again, you have to total it. These are the recommendations that the FDA has given us. So this particular video is just to give you that knowledge and that information to look at calorie serving size and understanding what each of these sections mean to make good food choices. However, then I'm going to do a second video that underneath the footnote, that's where you would see the ingredients. And within that second video, it will help you to understand what particular ingredients are and how they impact your food choices, but how does it tie into what's happening with the label? You need to understand, there's more than just understanding ingredients separately and the nutrition label separately. They're meant to be viewed together. So there's too much information to include it all in this one video. I wanted to separate it out to keep it as simple as possible to help you to understand it. So if you have any questions or comments, post them below so that we can help you get them answered and then look for that second video. So guys, it's about making good food choices, but a lot of that has to come from the education. So stick with me with following in this education series. So more to come and we'll catch you later.